Hey guys, how do we keep it dirty off-road? And today we're at SPC doing some planning for the brand new truck. And I'm going to give you guys a quick shop tour while we're going through it. SPC guys already kind of gave us an overview of what they're going to do to the truck. They're going to take care of all the kit. They're going to update it to the latest version, which is super freaking cool. And they're going to help us with a couple other things that we need to address, such as getting bed support. But in the meantime, I want to give you guys a quick shop tour of what's going on here at SPC, including some really cool stuff with the uh, new link system that they got going on. So we're going to talk to Jarrett and go through all that. Whatever you do, don't show the outside. It's a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are always busy, man. Always. Yeah, we try to keep busy. I see you guys have your race truck at the front. Can you yeah. give me a quick overview yeah. of that thing? Yeah. Yeah. It's a class 6100. It's an ES Motorsports chassis. We bought it a few years ago. It's all been upgraded to, most, to make it the most modern esque of 6100s with underdrives, so you run 40s, runs the new 535 motor, all that fun stuff. We've won four or five races in it now. This. We haven't raced much this wow. year. We've been so busy. Tell ourselves once every maybe Friday we're gonna actually get back to prepping it and get it back together. So we upgraded to two works rear end housing. Evan Weller takes care of all third members, all that good stuff. All JMR hubs. So, do you guys do all the shock tuning and everything for this guy? So we use Keith at KDM for tuning. Yeah. We got it really good, but if you want to get that extra ten percent, yeah. you know, you got to go to the gurus of that stuff. Everything is prepped in house. So the same guys that are putting together all your Raptor stuff are the same guys that are prepping these. And this is just kind of your showroom show It was supposed stuff, to be. Right? Yeah, it used to look like a showroom, and now it's just become <laughs> overflow, which kills me. But It's a good problem to have. It is, but I like for people to have somewhere to hang out and do all that. And you guys have grown, outgrown this shop already, man. You guys oh, we outgrew it right two years ago. So we actually have another shop across the street, which is all of our shipping. So that's basically where we found it much more efficient to get gain the space back here, move it all over there, and just let them handle all that. You know, So that's just... 2,000 square feet of just parts inventory. That's our baby. We like keeping stuff in inventory. We're always building bumpers. Here's some Gen 2 Bajas. Looks like Gen 2 Baja bolt-ons right there. So we're constantly just building and just sending it out, getting it powder coated. So I got a question yeah, for you, because yeah. this is one problem that I've always had. I'm always pulling people out or being pulled out because I'm at the front. Yeah. What options do you have to add like a, a hook down point, like a tow hook or something like that? So we've these? had guys do them right off of this junction right here, right. but it still kind of bends it out a little bit. Yeah, like so, if you have lights and all that yeah. stuff, it kind of gets in the way. Is there a way to add a tow hook type option to these? I mean, you could pull from that. I really wouldn't. Yeah, they're, most they're, guys they're do they're the control arms. Bumpers. Don't get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I tell people. I, no, we're not We're not trying to be everything to everyone. You know, okay. it, it, if you got it, you can go down off the lower sec, lower cross bracing if you really need to get creative with yep. it. Can so. we show some of your takeoff parts? Yeah. Because yeah. we got a lot of fans that are interested in this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have Jeff's constantly trying to clear stuff out. So... I mean, these are just all take off from CAS systems. We throw out all the upper control arms, tie rods, all that that stuff. But wow. you'd be surprised how many people are looking for that stuff. Man. I don't know. It just clu it clutters it. It gets to the point with me where I I hate clutter. It drives me nuts. So this is some of your other takeoff stuff. So right? this is just more takeoff parts that keep coming off trucks, and some guys want them back, some don't. Dude, do so you realize how much these are worth right now? Yeah. I just sold my last set for 700. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff gets rid of them, but a lot of people have been holding on to them. So some guys yeah. just think, you know, they're going to go back to stock or whatnot. And you even got takeoffs the race series. Well, because what, what has happened is a lot of guys have gone full 3 0 race series or be King or Fox, and then they drive in a mid travel truck. And it's just game over, right? Now, so can't you reuse the race series in no. the mid travel truck? No, nope. really? You don't want to. The problem is, remember we're talking about bypass shocks earlier yeah. and how they work and all that? So this is an internal bypass. So you have different rebound zones in it, you have different bump zones in yeah. it, plus it's recirculating reservoir, right? Yeah. And then the big thing is, what did Fox do for this truck? They lighten the springs, then the factory spring. The reason they did that, they want it cushy, they made it up with valving, right? Because you have different bump zones yeah. now and all that good stuff. The problem you have when you go wider, you're moving leverage ratios. So when you look at some of the other kits on the market and you see them go flying through bumps and you notice they kind of fall on their face and go like that yeah. doing that, their spring rates are 100% wrong. So we ha oh, have Oh, so our that makes sense. Because when, yeah. when I was going to those, man, I, I hated them. No, I, so, I thought they were way too soft. Yeah, so we have our own custom springs made for the mid travel and our own defined spring rate. Uh, Even though we run a 2.5 coil over on the front, that's fine. When you look at a Fox, an internal on a Fox 3.0 is actually a 2.5 piston. Yeah, a lot of people get all bent out of shape that it's a freaking 2.5. I don't understand it. So 
Hopefully this squashes anything. Mason, which you can argue is the best of the best when it comes to trophy trucks over there right now. Every 6100 truck they have two fives. is a 2.5 on the rear. And I think they might be running 2.5s on the front. Yeah, and, it, and this is something that people need to understand. Size uh, is not always better. Yeah, size is not <laughs> always better. It's all about the valving, the spring rate. It's the whole package. It's not just about having a 3.0. That's why the TRX is pretty decent with 2.5s. Mm -hmm. It needs some help, but it's decent you need with 2.5s. So these shocks are designed to have what we call shaft speed. You want that shock to be able to move quick and fast so when you throw these overly large shocks in it and guys especially guys that don't have to tune it we pulled valving out i mean to yeah. give you an idea here to give you an idea like on my my own pre-run well and so you guys know this is something we're gonna have to do with my truck right the previous yeah. owner had a power trip and decided to go 4.0s and we're gonna have to pull valving just to get those to cycle right because he has literally never touched the bumps on that because it's not properly valved. So this it out. truck we built a long time ago. It's full caged and you know full length. It's full length caged interior, all that good stuff. Wow. Hey, the um, shocks look like mine. Yeah. So because this is running a four four and it's not a race truck, you want to set up a pre runner to be predictable, comfortable, and not beat you up. You want it to be it's yes. not a race truck. You want it to be spongy, right? That's exactly what I want, man. And every, every time I've ridden people's trucks, it's like it's all rough. It's like, why is this rough? It's like, oh, we haven't shock tuned it yet. Why the hell, yeah, man? Go tune it, right? Go tune it. So in this coilovers at 3L, actually last week we just took it off. We went basically as light as you could possibly go. We went just short of pulling out the entire valving stack out of the actual core lever because it still was a little harsh in the ride zone. And that's just because that's a 4.4. I mean, that thing's with the same shock Rob Mack runs. And, yeah, and, you know, and I know and all that's guys. the problem I'm going to be facing. It'll help me with the weight that I'm carrying, but I know that's a problem I'm going to be facing. It's to move the shaft speed. And yeah. that's what you want. You need to move that shock because that's where it gets in its all its own. So when yeah. you look at some of these other, you know, mid-travel, long travel, what do you want to call them? I never marketed the kit as a long travel, so to speak, mid-travel, because it's still 16 plus inches of travel. In my opinion, you're not really long travel until you're center mountain, right? <laughs> Everybody calls it something different. 22, 23 yeah. inches in that range. I keep calling it mid-travel because to me, that's long travel is. would be a race truck. Yes, exactly. And that, and I, we're in the same mindset. Like this truck over here. Oh, this is similar to the update that mine's going to get, This right? is what yours is going to get. Yeah, this guy, this is a local customer. We're making a couple little tweaks to it that he wants to make. But basically, even though it's a 2.5, it still runs the whole length of the spring. So now you're using that whole shot. And we're able to get, we can get pretty clever with the valve inside of this to help give it nice, soft compliance when it comes to all the slow speed valve. And then in the bypass, obviously, you have your bump zone, you have your rebound zones, all that good stuff. That does all your heavy lifting. You just want that front to pop. That's your goal. Just keep it up. Don't let it dive on its face and get it to pop. So don't fall for the, oh, 3 fronts front with internal bypass here. I've seen some companies go as far as running a 3 front box, internal bypass, with the bypasses here and then a bump down on the arm. They probably have three to four different bump zones in that truck alone. I don't know how you tune that. What's your recommendation then on doing a front bump stop? Watch where they are. They're always this far off the lower arm, yeah, right? Yeah, very little. How quick are they engaging? You're basically negating all the bypass features in your shot. So when you have it engaging, your bump is now becoming your compression zone. As where when you go in here to the race truck, this will be a dramatic viewpoint of it, but you'll get a good chance to kind of get, you know see what I'm talking about. From there to there, this is 30 inch in this truck. This is probably the last 10% of your travel. It's, and that's where it should it's be. It's the final line of defense. All your tuning is done in here. Because I've seen a lot of guys rely on bumps to protect their front end, but they're not running bypass. They're just to not me, setting it's a up cheap. that front. Good. Yeah, I mean, to me, we it's have, a cheap. Yeah, we have no better test dummies than, well, Jeff, wherever he just went, right? And all the guys that go down the Mexico trips, I can't tell you the amount of mid-travels down there, and they utterly beat the hell out of them. Or this so. dummy, because I'm going to be beating the hell out of this Perfect. Truck. There you go. <laughs> Let's take a look at your link system. That's, okay. that's really interesting to me, because that... There's a couple things I want to highlight there. What's going on? We cut all the cross supports out of the center of the truck. Okay, we add 4130 plating. This will all get little angles in there, sand it down. This guy will get a plate, and we'll show you on the other one that gets put up through. But we add all, we lace all the cross to the in there to prevent flex and flex out. And you guys are reinforcing the stock plate. That whole thing gets reinforced. You were kind of asking before about the body mount. That all gets reinforced on that bed mount section there. Now, something I didn't see in your video was this. You guys yeah. are reinforcing that as well, right? Yeah. Yep. That's very cool, because this does move a lot. The back frame needs some support. Yep. Oh, yeah, and then don't forget, you have the entire fuel cell. So all that cage is linked together, right? So this is a 42-gallon, I believe, fuel cell. <laughs> That's that a, has, is that a three-card huh? three tank? 
I3 uh, pumps? Yeah, in my, at today's rates, right? <laughs> we integrated the sway bar with it. That all laces up and connects. So again, that's more lateral support and prevents twists, right? So we can option out these bed racks, however guys love for the most part. All these trucks you're seeing here, these are all getting 39 inch tires. This actually is a- 39? All these will run 39. Whoa, how are you running 39s up front? We push the suspension forward and out. How much do you go forward? Uh, inch and a half. Inch and a half forward? Yeah, about roughly an inch and a half or so, yeah. So let's finish up the back yeah, and then yeah. I'd like to see the front. So. Okay, so we get rid of all our adjustable bump system. I love which this I right can here. I go into later. Well, there's the way to go. Is there, yes cross, no. is there cross bracing for yeah. the, it's just. The whole structure. You're assuming, that, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. you don't need it. I, we had a debate about that. It, you don't need it. I love this, man. Yep. This is so, so much here's all nicer. your limit strap tabs that come here. You get all the aluminum paneling that'll go down there, the skid plate. When you come underneath, everything's put on Dell clamps and it's all bolted through, but we're not relying on the bed bolt system. That's the thing. Everyone thinks, a lot of people are thinking, well, oh God, how the hell is that going to hold yeah, up here? That was my initial yes. concern, right? Yes. When I saw your kit, yep. but then I started seeing this. No. Right? Yeah. So this is where all the actual load is. And it's bossed through. So your load is cross bolted here, right? You see that one? Yeah. And then you're cross bolted right there with two five eighths that are going right up to where the main pivot is. Okay. And we put all that triangulation in to make sure nothing's going to bend, tweak, or twist. And so far, it's worked amazing. Yeah, and that's really great because I, when I originally saw your kit, I was like, oh no, it's in these, and these are yeah. pretty weak. No, this is a plate that comes down, it's, it's quarter inch plate that comes down, and it's all 4130, and then connects and it's all fixture welded here at the shop, and then just basically drops in. We have a template to, for our bed cuts that I'll show you when we're all done here. What, uh, what size shops are you doing here? So this guy is a 4025. Uh, what's uh, the, what's the extra stroke? Uh, 1816. 1816? Wait, so you guys are doing 20 inches of travel with an 18 inch, 1816 1816, shot? Because we set it so far back, wow. right? So we're not, to get the clearance we need away from the bed, we could have got 24, 25 inches if we would have stuffed it way up here, but now you're cutting into cab and all that, and I didn't want to do that. And it, this I, is made for the guy who wants to keep a Raptor a Raptor, enjoy his truck and drive it to the grocery store, have a bed, do all his normal stuff, but yet lead the pack every time when he goes out. In the Having owned a link truck, owned a race truck, I was blown away at how damn comfortable this thing is. I can't wait to see one of these on the trails, man. Oh, you'll freak. They're, they're insane. When do you guys plan on showing this on dirt? Uh, this one will be going probably in a couple weeks. I mean, this one's almost done. It's just final assembly. It's gonna put the links on. And it's a true four link. It's not a pan or bar or any of that crap. So you I love this link. setup back here, by the way. I mean, because. Yeah. I want to do this to my truck. I, I think all the trucks need it, especially the Gen 1. I like the mounts so that it doesn't move like crazy. Yeah, we make those. This is pretty cool. Yeah, and it puts it right at hand's reach, right? You don't so have the, to go digging for your cool shit. The cool thing about this, though, because it's not caged all the way through, you don't hear the tappets, you don't hear yes. the crossover ring slamming. And everyone says, why the hell are you doing this without a cage? You're crazy. It's so much faster. Let's be honest. Raptor guys are going 10 tenths all the time anyway. Raptor stock, the guys are still doing 90 to 100 in the dirt. The difference is you now have a truck that can go 70, 80, 90, whatever, but comfortable and in control. You're that's not key. bucking like a loon. Yes. That's key because yeah. the trucks buck like crazy, but that's the yeah. best thing about the Raptor is no. they're comfortable. This, we took the first one that has the tent on it that all you guys have seen. We yes. went up Bessemer Mine Road out at Johnson Valley where those are just super sharp UTV whoops at two footers just in really long increments. <clears throat> and I mean, we blitz through there 70 plus miles an hour. So your links mounts are all up here. So those are your lower link mounts, upper links are on the inside. What kind of reinforcement are you guys doing for that? I see. So a you have to go boss through. If you don't boss through, you'll rip the frame out. Okay, so I see it's a very large plate that goes all the way through, and you yeah. boss through. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen off. some of these rip off, but they, they didn't weren't put a boss through. They didn't put a boss through. Yeah. So what you're doing is ripping out the entire section. Yeah. It basically <laughs> just yeah. like a sardine can. Yeah, that's, so, a, that's exactly it. Let's take a look at the front. I'd love to see yeah. what you guys did there because they can't be the same. It's a mid trouble. That's it. But I think the geometry is different, right? You guys moved it forward now? Oh, we've just tweaked on uh, arm location and, and stuff. Just like a good one to look at. It's actually over here. Fully droop. I think we're at like a, a quarter inch of bumps here or something. I mean, it's... Now, this is a strategy you guys are adopting more forward, right? Where you keeping... Yeah, I mean, you know, well, the, the guy who found... So Cameron Steele learned the hard way. Basically, if you don't keep that factory in it being an electric rack, you're going to destroy your rack. Because those racks are very sensitive and they're very weak. Moisture. The seals are weak, the yep. housing's weak. Yep. And, if you... and real world too, what's also cool about them, everything has its mode of failure, right? Every point has it. You would much rather break this, bend this guy right yeah, here. Exactly. 
Carry a spare with you, unbolt it, bolt it in, just measure your thread so you can at least get it close, string it, whatever you gotta do. And then go back up all your day versus changing an entire rack. And yeah. Gen 2 racks sometimes aren't fun to get. This, uh, this is a warning for you guys, because you guys know we've had a lot of steering problems. That rack is $2,600 without all the extra junk. Yep. And it's hard to get. And when it fails, it fails fantastically. <laughs> you know, the, the housing will crack or it'll just fail to the point that your your truck is immobilized. It's not like a, like a hydraulic steering where you can still drive the truck. You yep. cannot drive the truck once that thing fails. So being able to reduce the load, because I used to be against these, but after I started having steering issues, I realized, no, this is the way to go. It's one thing that I'm a big proponent of. I always have been. First off, you always have to make stuff that looks cool, right? If it doesn't look cool, no one wants to buy it. It doesn't matter how great it is. So number one, that has to always be good. But right there with it has to be the function side yes. of it. My personal, I'd always rather have the function over the cool factor. The look, the bigger raw, in Raptor world, it's been this way since the damn things come out. Everyone thinks bigger is always better. And it is such not no, the case. No, it, it really is. Doing the right application for what you're doing. That's, That's what, the key. A lot of people are dogging the TRX because of its approach, but it really isn't. I mean, the biggest problem with the TRX is the spring rates. They put the too soft of a spring rate because they'd expected it to be a street truck. You yeah. get proper shocks on the TRX. You can oh, see it'll probably it. go good. I mean, we I, may get I a TRX. A, uh, track Hawk, Jeep Track Hawk. That motor is insane. Yeah, it's just it's, we we have one on order. We still haven't decided if we're going to cancel it or the not. The problem I saw with that truck, the only thing that's going to be a nightmare is the front frame is so freaking wide that you're yes. not going to be able to do. I don't know how you're going to do a sexy bumper on it. I really don't. Well, I mean, ev everything you've seen always looks like that buck tooth cut off look. It just doesn't look the overbite yeah, look. It doesn't look it's, good. It's, I mean, luckily Ford and Ford, if you're listening, please don't change this. Keep it narrow. <laughs> you know, let, so we have our... Well, the other challenge for you guys too on the TRX is the bed. The bed is so weak on the TRX. Like if you guys thought the Raptor beds were weak, wait That's till you guys weird. see the TRX bed. It's only four bolts and they're all underneath. Nothing's up top. Yeah. It's so any, any accessories on the bed is going to require so much cutting and drilling. Yeah. And there's not that much weight. There's well, not that much strength back there. For us, we're Ford based. I'm not even going. Uh, are we, you guys? So you guys aren't even going to try the TRX? You know, I, it, there's you have Gen 3s coming out. You have Broncos coming out. Yeah. Subaru. If I can't keep growing based off the entire Ford platform, mm -hmm. I don't want to. I like my Ford. But TRXs and Raptors are meant to run together, man. Yeah, they are. It should be cool now to see. Now it doesn't build Chevys. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a reason for that. We all know that Chevy makes good engines, but not much else. Well, but <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, like we were talking, I can't be everything to everyone. And I don't want to stretch myself in. I'd rather focus on the Raptor group and the Bronco group. I want to be the best at what we do, and that is what we focus on. If I spread my resources thin, it doesn't work out for anyone. So I got a question for you. Yes. Because I know this comes up a lot, and, and I've seen many companies take a different approach. Why do the tab for Ooh. the shock instead of integrate it into the arm? Location easier to build, keeps cost down, you're not going to break it, or why get so intricate with it? Why make something more complicated than it needs to be? I like the look of a kick down like that. Now, is there is any drawbacks to that, though? Well, I mean, you may lose about that much ground clearance right there. But well, if anything, I think you gain ground clearance, on right? In the inside, you do. Yeah, because yeah. it jets right out. So, it's really just a, in a, an appearance. That's all it is. But yeah, you won't rip those off, you won't break out of a pocket of it. Because I've the seen, your problems. I've seen it. I've seen it done both ways yeah. on many different race trucks, right? You've seen the straight arms. You've seen the yep. the little crook. What would you call that little crook like that? It's like a little a bend. A bend. A little <laughs> yeah. bend. Yeah. yeah. There's a little broke plate. A broke plate in there. You know, like yeah, like the, our race truck has it. It pocketed in. There's just no no need for it. It's just I, a I different mean, approach. We've had probably anywhere between 50 and 70 mid travels, maybe more. I mean, I could be light on that. Running around, I've yet to seen one come back. I've seen guys absolutely destroy their pivots bend them in i've never seen a lower break yeah this is the weak point so do you yeah. guys make anything to reinforce this because this is the weak point and I've so seen obviously we do our slot delete to lock those out and then on some people that are here we'll do like cross members like on the big, bigger pre-runners and all that but there's a simple way to make sure you don't do that and it just stay off the brakes in the hole <laughs> I, it's all about your foot man. <laughs> you, you know drive the truck you have not the one you wish you had that's what I always tell people. But there's always oh shit moments. There I've is. gotten a, quite a bit of few. Yeah, like, there is. When I was when I was first starting out, but look at the, the seventeen year frame. I mean, that's people said, why aren't you building those out of chromoly? If three sixteenth plate breaks before that, I'll sign my business over to you. It ain't gonna happen. But well, you can bend this shot. though before that'll break. What's that? You can bend this for sure. Well, you can bend those, beat them. Yeah, it's just you know, it's I bend it's a, a good frames. strong frame, especially Gen twos. They, compared to the Gen 1s, and yeah. they've gotten really strong. I love the platform. I think they've done an amazing job. I just wish they used different steering. The new electric? Yeah, and there's no yeah. options to really upgrade that. No, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, but like, you, work I, with what they give you. I wish there was like a, a way to convert it to 
Hydraulic? Hydraulic, but then you still have to deal with all the codes because it's so integrated. And I, have you guys had a chance to take a look at the Gen 3 yet? Oh, I have not got. I'm hope, so, hoping to get one here in my possession soon. So the steering is the same, but the braking system's now electronic. Really? Yeah, so you know how before we have the traditional yeah, master cylinder? Master, yeah. master cylinder yeah. has two electric motors on each side, and the ABS is directly integrated into it. So even more module. Yeah, yeah people ask, why are we caging these? For one, they actually crash really good. <laughs> that's, that's one reason. We just saw it. We just yeah, saw it a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly, right? There's so many freaking modules in these things. And when, when I see guys doing them to their brand new Raptors, I've been doing this a really long time now, being guilty of it myself, cutting my own truck in half and doing all that. Just start with an older platform. Just, yeah, and that's that's you know, the reason why we went for the Gen 1. Yeah. Because, like, the Gen 3, I think, is going to cause a problem for you guys, is the IWE. We've all been complaining about the IWE for years. Yep. They finally fixed it. But yep. now the speed sensor and the IWE all is one. one module. So we'll probably have to change our hub lock. Yeah. So that's, that's we have a $50,000 barrel lock. I'll hook up right now. i show you. So we scan everything, and I invested in that about three years ago. I can't wait to see what you guys do with the Gen 3. It'll be fun. I'm excited for it. So I already know we're going to do, all obviously, the, the usual stuff. The billet links, to dress it up, all that fun stuff. Question for you. I've been asking everybody about this. Nobody does. It. Can you guys do a mid mud flap setup like a mud flap setup to try to reduce all the damage we get on the back because we like my Never shocks my shocks my axle mm -hmm. everything back here on all my trucks yeah. eventually ends up bare metal yeah. and as long as i keep running it's fine but nobody makes a nice mud flap setup that maybe sits like somewhere over here to Just reduce like that, that like that short yeah, yeah it's yeah. something that pivots in yeah, I mean, so, so to give you an idea like how you could like you boss through the frame like that right yeah so you could just do a boss through the frame drill drill boss it yeah bolt it and have it hinge right that would be easy because that would be great because i've been yeah. trying i like i did my own little crap setup but i couldn't get the right plastic and it just it, it didn't work <laughs> It wasn't flexible. You need something that's on a hinge. Yeah. Can you guys build something like that? Can we? Yes. Will I? I'll look in. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason yeah. I say is because I, I, it's no, a problem. No, it's actually a good idea. With. I've never even thought about it. It's very, a problem I've dealt with for a long time. Yep. My whole back end gets destroyed because of it. Now this is your manufacturing area, right? So yeah, this part of it. All of our mid travel is welded up in Arizona and gets shipped to us on a pallet. This is your link cage. <laughs> so this is the link cage. Yeah. And so you can run two verticals, two horizontals. I mean, these are all getting thirty nine. Like I said, these are all welded on our big fixture table back there. So we set up the whole table where this all just clicks together. It's basically a pile of over here. Is this is it? So that cage starts out out of this box, and every single one of these are obviously lasered. They're all numbered, and it just clicks together like a jigsaw. Wow. So yeah, more fixture tables, shipping like I said, in the other department. They're just welding up shackles. James doing bumpers right now. I don't like customers waiting, so we try to keep as much stuff in stock as possible. Some of our bumpers are welded here. Some are welded up in Orange County at a my buddy Tim's place, where those are all robotically welded. So right now, COVID's kind of affected a lot of shops, man, with shock Not delays us. and everything. Really? No, the, C the whole SEMA industry is up, I think I heard 30%. The little thing about what people did. Most people own Raptors, they're not waiters, and it, uh, I think it's waiters and waitresses, but they can't afford Raptors for the most part, right? We blew up. In the last two years, we've just skyrocketed. Wow. Yeah. So, like, if somebody wanted to get a full mid travel build with shots, what's yeah. the current wait time? Mid travel, front, rear. Our goal is to get those in and out. Depending on how crazy they get with paint, because we obviously outsource paint. You're six to eight weeks, and you're done. Really? Yeah. It all we build in the bulk of twenty now. It's waiting to get in. Shocks is the problem. Yeah, that's what's delaying you know, all shocks. King, if you're listening, build. Some guys say, "Well, I don't want. I'm just going to wait to get shocks." No. So get in line. Because if you don't Six get the line, they're going to keep getting pushed. And I don't know when the hell they're going to get caught up. I really don't. No, and I don't think they will for a long time. Probably not. And it's not their fault. They, they're they big companies. They're huge, right? I'm 11 or 13 of us, whatever it is. They're hundreds. We're a small, we're tight. We're a micro business, right? Yeah. So, so these are Gen 1 Smurf bumpers, Gen 2 stuff over there, bypass mounts over there, track bar stuff over there. And you guys are able to custom out just, customize just about anything, too, we on can, your bars, right? We can. As far as, like, light bars and stuff, yeah, I'll be honest. I'm trying to get out of any customization mm -hmm. business. As sexy as it is and cool as it is, we'll build one or two cool Halo trucks a year, maybe. But I want to focus on just the best almost custom s but production bolt on stuff for raptors and broncos that's that's my goal can we talk about your bump stop because that's the yeah. one area where i'm like really critical of you guys because okay. i've had problems with all the bumps i'm stops. critical of my cell phone i've done the rpg one yeah the rpg one while solid it moves into my bed and it's it, destroyed it my bed up, right 
We tried the Icon kit, very precise to the point that it's impossible to install, right? It's a bitch to install. Yours is the easiest to install, but I feel like that crossbar is a little weak. So what- holding it from twisting in. Right, I mean, right, that's so- all, That's all that's doing. Where, where guys have made mistakes, and I'll show it to you. So here's one getting put on right now. The first thing that's critical is height location. So we yeah. have a picture on our website, make sure the new bumps are different from the old bumps with the IFPs, but- Oh, and another thing I want to point out too, yeah. The height also matters based on the springs you select. Everybody thinks it's one size fits all, it's not. Well, the stack, as long as your stack height is all the Deaver stack heights are almost identical. Not the HTs are a little bit thicker. The HTs will come down a hair with the HT. Yeah. To keep it from hitting here. Yeah. But <clears throat> what we change, well not change, what I want to ex can't say the importance enough of, this bolt. Majority of the bump kits I've seen just get destroyed didn't run this bolt. Yep. And that makes it push out and tweak out. Okay. We went to quarter inch plate because we needed to. We went to thicker mounts up here because we needed to. Like I said, if I'm not a prideful person. If I see something failing and we had failures in the past, we'll keep tweaking it. It's revision. Ford did it with the Gen 2, right? They're gonna do it with the Gen 3. We're on revision number, I think four now. And then the cross tube up here, as long as those are locked down tight, you will not see this thing bend. If all your setup is correct in height, you will not. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people run into problem is this height is critical. Now, yep. another thing problem that I've noticed is this is never where it's supposed to be. You the gotta nut, keep it all loose. Everybody keeps this very tight, yep. but this bolt moves depending and on who installed it. Like I've seen some of them that are perfectly centered, but I've seen half of them not. Well, another reason too, a lot of guys aren't sanding down the booger welds yeah. on the side of the frame. So that's probably a lot of what you're running into with it coming out. You have to flush that. No, it's, yeah, we've done that. Yeah. But like the biggest problem I ran into, and, I, and we saw it on our last truck, my buddy's truck, mm -hmm. this bolt was like straight on one side, but on the other side, it right. wasn't centered. It was off Perfect. to one side. Oof. So that makes it that much more difficult to install that bolt. Yeah, I haven't seen it that much. So oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I can ask the guys, though. I'm not the one doing the installs anymore. <laughs> they haven't complained to me. So some of the other things we did, we added a uh, tool that has the internal nuts on it that are welded to the guy, so you just feed it in there, so yeah, it's just easier that. for install. And I do like that you guys use more of the face, right? Most companies only use two. You guys are going a little bit farther out. But yeah, like, we're capturing that third. And there is, so there is a revision coming, because guys have asked us for the hanger in the back uh -huh. on that side. It's coming, the cutout, the worry. Now, <laughs> why not go full clamshell all the way around? What's it doing? Well, I mean, as long as you're capturing up here and you keep everything tight, and you're captured here and keep everything tight, right? Mm -hmm. And your geometry set up right here. Look at Jeff's truck. Look at all the trucks that we have put together. You don't see that problem other than what this used to bend up here for the guys that really went crazy. That's mm -hmm. why I beefed all this up up here as well. I'm convinced finally fix that tweak up. You do your stress analysis on the computer and you know, and the Raptor owners are good at finding the failures. I've been really good at that. I don't know. No, and that's I've fun. Been lucky. It's fun, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> so one thing that we do, like for guys that have bent theirs and everything, we've literally just loosened them up, ratchet strapped them, welded the whole backside. So we always try to, if guys have problems, we're always going to try to help it. Some people need to understand, they've got to, they're not comfortable installing stuff. Don't do it. You'll make a mistake. Yeah, that's one of the main things we show on the channel. It's like, we're going to show you how to do it because nobody really shows you how to do Raptor stuff. No. But at the same time, we're going to show you why you shouldn't do it. You're going to see some of the issues we ran into. We don't hide any of it. That's why, like, Icon Kit, I can't tell you how many guys are like, I'm not installing it. I had my shop do it yeah. after they saw our video. Yep. Which is a good part. I think people have to understand, I have wrecked the race truck. We have broken transmissions in it. We have, through, after three, 400 miles, you still have to go through that truck inside a full 2-inch, 30 chrome Molly chassis. You will still have to weld cracks. Off-roading is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> right? We don't build in. You can't drop this from the ceiling and expect something not to give. But that's the thing. I think the Ford is the best platform to start. Oh, it is. Because if you do a Toyota, there's so much more reinforcement you have to do. Yeah. On a Raptor, you can bolt on and have a good time. Shit, you can take it stock and have a good time. Yeah. Can't do they're that with amazing. the Toyota. Yeah, like, they're amazing. These are not as important as it used to be with the Gen 1s. Gen 2 is so much stronger in the frame. This was to prevent that frame from bending. And there's been every which way you could probably do the bump kit has been done now. And for me, it was all about adjustability. So what's better, the IFPs or the traditional ones? I think IFPs are a more progressive, softer hit. Traditional ones are just your big boy 2.5s, which are not meant for tuning. And the problem you have, if this was at right height, you know, the axle would be sitting probably right about here. So how much stroke are you using on your shock versus when's this engaging? So you're negating all those cute bypass tubes that you have, which are there to design different point of pressure. 
right? High pressure, low pressure. So the more you tune with that valve stack in there and the more you have it closed off, you can have a crazy bump zone. For example, we don't even have a bump on the front of the racetrack at all. It's all in the bypass. It's final tube is the bump zone inside the shock. What I tell people is we keep our saw. And really, yeah. it's a last line of defense. When exactly. you see some of these other trucks that are just only in you can see they're hitting the bumps. That's a hitting a brick wall. Well, I think that most people don't even tune theirs. They keep them at factory spec, which is like 200 PSI. 200 for the PSI, way. which is crazy. insane. And a lot of guys look at this and they're like, oh, it's not strong enough. No, this is better. I, it's, I have a hard time getting people to understand why it's better. Well, this, yeah, has a spring inside. It's soft, right? It, yeah. it, it progressively ramps up. Yeah, I'll show you the links for the uh, four links. So these just got back. Oh, <laughs> dude. Are these welded or machined? These are full billet machined. These are the four links. Oh, dude. So we'll do this one. Here. So this is going on that truck on the left that we looked at. And then here's your shock uniball right there, right? So you're, Aluminum? It's all billet. Yeah. So Aluminum. here's your shock clevis. Okay, this is a fox. This is one of those for illustration purposes. So this, this goes on the shaft. This goes over. And then that is now how it mounts. So you don't have to do these crazy, big, thick, massive chromoly links. You get sexy. So, and then, you know, we, we pocketed it. So you kind of... Dude, Dude, how much is just a set of those? I'd have to work. I have it all built into the package. They ain't cheap. Oh, no. No. <laughs> but they sexy. Listen, and the four-link kit isn't for everyone. It's not No, no, it really all. isn't. But... It's the next level. Yeah, it's, you know, some people got it and they, they don't mind spending it. It does take the truck, and I hate using the word completely, you know, transformed and game changed, but it does. It, it's a Raptor that you could drive every damn day on the street, but when you have the four link set up with the mid travel in the front, it's so smooth. It's, it blew me away when I went. And, you know, these are all your clevises, so different ones for different shocks. So these are the King. So you, um, so those are the Foxes. Kings right here, so different how they do a big weld on. Wow. So, you so we have to make go. all that custom. So here's yeah. all your hardware. Every misalignment we make is custom for it. Obviously, all grade eight. Well, I think this is a perfect time to stop. Thank you, Jeff, for the oh, Jer Jared. Jared, yeah. Jared, for <laughs> the right. no worries. Jared and Jeff, right? That's it. Jared, guys. Jeff, and Dom. He's uh, another sales guy, and yeah. Dom is the guy in Denver, right? Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. that's who you met. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These guys were amazing to me. I mean, you've never heard about SVC and their customer service. It's legendary. Um, I highly recommend them based on my experiences now, and we're going to get the truck in here in a couple of weeks to get it really, get it ready yeah, up, to go play. Up to what it needs to be. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so definitely get all of them. Go on their website. We're going to put the links below. Definitely check them out, guys. Any questions or comments below? And thanks for watching. Right, and thank, thank you, you, Jared. Absolutely. Take care.